This is a review from class from Chapter 7 in the Claywell book. We look at the historical foundation in the Middle Ages that most nursing care was performed by religious orders, which I have listed at the bottom. In the Renaissance, the influence of religious orders declined and helped along by Protestant Reformation in Europe. Nursing continued to move more fully into the general population, who is no longer primarily the province of religious orders. Later, nursing care became more secular and more structured, and the formal training programs had begun. In the Industrial Revolution, women continued to push past societal boundaries to improve nursing education and patient care. In the early 1980s, the nature of health care began to change dramatically as cost reduction and quality improvement issues surfaced and managed care emerged. Florence Nightingale was highly educated with high social standing. In the Crimean War, also known as the Lady with the Lamp, and she established a nursing school and wrote one of the first nursing textbooks. She changed nursing to become a respectable profession, believed that nursing was an art, and one that required organized, practical, and scientific training. Florence Nightingale was responsible for major contributions to education of nurses and began the development of the nursing process and served a large role in the development of nursing theory. She promoted research. And when she learned of the lack of medical and nursing care for British troops during the Crimean War, she organized a group of 38 nurses to travel to southern Russia. Despite societal opposition, she and her team reached the Crimean battlefields in 1854. They found overcrowding in the hospitals. There were no medical supplies and limited space for the sick and injured. But using her own funds, Nightingale obtained supplies, cleaned up the unsanitary conditions, and established laundries to wash the linens. At the end of the six months, Nightingale and her nurses had decreased the death rate from 42% to 2%. Dorothea Dix was a Boston school teacher who had been crusading to improve care of the mentally ill in institutions. In 1841, she volunteered to teach Sunday school classes to female convicts in East Cambridge Jail. During her visit, she saw people with mental illnesses who had been treated inhumanely and neglectfully, and she became determined to improve those conditions. She was an activist, and on behalf of the indigent insane who, through a vigorous program of lobbying state legislatures and the United States Congress, she created the first generation of American mental asylums. Claire Barton was known as the Angel of the Battlefield during the American Civil War. She began teaching school at a time when most teachers were men, and she was among the first women to gain employment in the federal government. Barton risked her life to bring supplies and support to soldiers in the field during the Civil War, and at age 60, she founded the American Red Cross in 1881 and then went on to lead it for the next 23 years. Her understanding of the needs of people in distress and the ways in which she could provide help to them guided her throughout her life. By the force of her personal example, she opened paths to the new field of volunteer service. Linda Richards was the first professionally trained American nurse. She established nursing training programs in the United States and Japan and created the first system for keeping individual medical records for hospitalized patients. Linda Richards became actively involved in nursing organizations and can be regarded as one of the movers and shakers of the young profession. She served as the first president of the American Society of Superintendents of Training Schools in 1894, which was the first professional organization for nurses. Mary Adelaide Nutting. She wrote a book on the history of nursing with Lavinia Dock, and it was a multi-volume history of nursing. In 1907, she left John Hopkins to become professor of institutional administration at Columbia Teachers College and was the first woman to hold a professorship at Columbia University and the first university professor of nursing in the world. She established a graduate nursing education program and led Columbia's nursing education department until her retirement in 1925. Lavinia Dock. She graduated from Bellevue Training School for Nurses in 1886 and soon after became night supervisor at Bellevue. As both student and supervisor, she became aware of the problems students faced in studying drugs and solutions. She wrote a book, Material Medica for Nurses, one of the first nursing textbooks. In addition to serving as a foreign editor of the American Journal of Nursing, she wrote Hygiene and Morality had co-authored with Mary Adelaide Nutting the first two volumes of a four-volume History of Nursing. 
Volumes 3 and 4 were completed by Doc alone in 1912. She worked with Lillian Wald at Henry Street Settlement and with Isabel Hampton Robb at John Hopkins School of Nursing. She was also secretary of the International Council of Nurses for more than 20 years. And throughout her life, she was a devoted political activist. Isabel Hampton Robb was the American Nurses Association's first president and was a nursing profession's prime mover in organizing at the national level. In 1896, Robb organized the group known as the Nurses Associated Alumni of the United States and Canada. The group was renamed the American Nurses Association in 1911. Earlier in 1893, Robb gathered together a nucleus of women who were superintendents of schools and founded the American Society of Superintendents of Training Schools for Nurses. This organization became the National League of Nursing Education in 1912. Robb was one of the original members of the committee to found the American Journal of Nursing. And while serving as a superintendent of nurses at the Illinois Training School at Chicago and principal of the Training School for Nurses at the John Hopkins Hospital, Robb was responsible for initiating many improvements in nursing education. She is noted to help reduce the working hours of students and promote licensure exams. Lillian Wald, she worked at the New York Juvenile Asylum and help with home nursing for poor immigrant families in New York's Lower East Side. Wald's work in the area prompted her to move there to be a visiting nurse and help aid the families who were living in horrible conditions. After gaining a sponsor, Wald's practice grew, as did her staff, which by 1913 had grown to 92 people. She worked in that area for 40 years, and her practice became the Henry Street Settlement and then turned into the Visiting Nurse Service of New York City. Mary Breckenridge. She had turned her personal tragedies into a lifelong journey to help others. She was a widow, then became divorced, and then went through the death of her two children. She established the Frontier Nursing Service in 1925 to provide professional health care in the Appalachian Mountains of Eastern Kentucky, one of America's poorest and most isolated regions. The Frontier Nursing Service lowered the maternity mortality rate in Leslie County, Kentucky, from the highest in the country to well below the national average. In her doctoral dissertation, Dr. Montag proposed educating a technical nurse for two years to assist the professional nurse whom she envisioned as having a baccalaureate degree. Associate degree education for nursing began as part of the experimental project at Teachers College, Columbia University, New York in the 1950s. Dr. Montag advocated the creation of an associate degree in nursing that would have great impact on community college education. Rogers' theory defined nursing as an art and science that is humanistic and humanitarian. It is directed toward the unitary human and is concerned with nature and the direction of human development. The goal of nurses is to participate in the process of change. According to Rogers, the science of unitary human beings contains two dimensions. The science of nursing, which is the knowledge specific to the field of nursing that comes from scientific research, and the art of nursing, which involves using the science of nursing creatively to help better the life of the patient. In World War I, both the Army and the Navy had nurse corps. At the onset of World War I, 403 women were on active duty in the Army Nurse Corps, founded in 1901. By Armistice Day, on November 11, 1918, over 21,000 nurses had enlisted and over 10,000 had served overseas. They served with distinction. Three were awarded the Distinguished Service Cross, 23 received the Distinguished Service Medal, and numerous nurses received meritorious awards from Allied Nations. Many were wounded, and more than 200 died in service. In World War II, nurses were involved in all aspects of care, in the military hospitals, on battleships, or flying on medical evacuation planes. The nurses during World War II worked closer to battle lines than they did in World War I or any war before that. This allowed them to provide faster care to the wounded. The nurses often worked and served under harsh conditions. Their reality forced them to not only adjust to these conditions, but to also improvise and make emergency decisions on the spot. In some instances, their proximity to war saw Army nurses using firearms for protection, 
In addition to working in field hospitals, some nurses underwent additional training to become flight nurses or evacuation nurses. The Korean Conflict When Korean War broke out in 1950, there were just 22,000 women in uniform. The military rushed to draft to call up and recruit needed manpower. When these efforts came up short, the services asked American women to leave their jobs, their homes, and families to serve their country in its time of need, just as they had in previous wars. This time, they were steered into clerical and administrative positions. They called these the pink-collar jobs, except for the nurses. Many of the 102,000 men that were wounded owe their survival to the brave, highly skilled nurses who risked their lives to bring emergency medicine closer to the battlefield than ever before. Whether they served in a MASH, a mobile army surgical hospital unit, on a hospital ship in the hostile waters surrounding Korea, or as flight nurses on an evacuation aircraft, these women were vital to the war effort. When General MacArthur landed in Incheon, Army Nurse Corps officers also went ashore on the very same day of the invasion. Vietnam Nurses The nurses served in the hospital ships of the Navy, the airlift helicopters and airplanes of the Air Force, and the hospitals and field hospitals of the Army. They arrived in Vietnam with various levels of nursing experience, from newcomers to the field with barely six months of nursing under their belts, to experienced veterans of 20 plus years. Usually the more confident and experienced the nurse, the better they were able to cope with the stress and the sheer number of casualties they treated on a daily basis. A nurse knows that Linda Richards is also known as, and the correct answer is number two, the first trained nurse in America. Number one is Clara Barton. Number three is Dorothea Dix. And number four is Florence Nightingale.